Great. Hello, and thank you for being here today. My name is Lauren Spinelli. I am the team lead for the Center for Teaching and Learning PR campaign. Over the course of 16 weeks, we worked hard to create an organic campaign um, to build awareness around the CTL on SDSU's campus. So our campaign was from the ground up, and it started with vigorous research to inform our messaging and to reach our strategic business objectives. Now I'm going to pass it over to Annalise, our Director of Research, who's going to take us through that process. Hello everyone, my name is Annalise and I'm the Director of Research. So before we began any planning, we wanted to ensure that we had a well-informed campaign. So to do so, we conducted research from January to March, and this gave us our pre-test data. And this served as the point of comparison come the end of our campaign to see just how much we moved the needle. So in our pre-test research, we conducted depth interviews, we distributed a survey to faculty members via email, and we also conducted, or we also reviewed, sorry, secondary research. I will now pass it off to Maya to further discuss research. Hello, my name is Maya, and to kick off our research, we started off with depth interviews. We conducted five of these interviews with professors across in different departments across the SDSU campus. What we found in these interviews is that we found that we found five common themes. The first one being pedagogical training, where we learned that professors either preferred not to give, either preferred to learn as they go along and had no professional training, or they got it from another institution prior to coming to SDSU, or they got it from within their department on the SDSU campus, meaning they didn't get it from the CTL. The second thing that we found was collaboration. We learned that, we learned that professors were collaborating with each other outside the classroom, and some of them even forming a mentor-mentee type of relationship with one another. The third thing that we found was challenges with teaching, where we found that professors had the same issues in the classroom, such as um, academic dishonesty, teaching in large lecture halls, and also learning to finding ways to motivate their students. The fourth thing that we found was um, knowledge, with, knowledge interaction with the CTL, where we, while we couldn't find a consensus, we learned that professors knew of the CTL, but the reasons for wanting to um, interact with it varied, but mostly it was because they didn't have the time. And the last thing that we found was likelihood of attendance of the events. And again, we couldn't find a consensus because the answers varied from each professor as the reasons to why they didn't interact with the CTL. And our next, um, I'm gonna now pass it over to Rosa. So after gathering that really insightful qualitative information, we went on to create a survey using Qualtrics, which is an online survey platform. The survey was really designed to measure three things, as you can see here. We used scales to measure word of mouth intention, attitude, and relationship with the CTL among SDSU professors. We then divided up a population of 1,759 SDSU professors into two groups so that we could send a pre-test survey to one group and a post-test survey to the other group at the end of our campaign in order to measure the success of our implementation. For the pre-test survey, we re had received a response rate of 11%, which was great and perfectly adequate for our research needs. And the pre-test results also showed us that professors generally scored fairly high across all of these three scales, which was also really good news, and we were able to factor that into our goals and objectives moving forward. During our research campaign, we also looked at a lot of secondary research. This included surveys conducted by our client in 2014 and 2015, which had really great insights into the reasons why professors are maybe not attending CTL events. And one of those was lack of time, which pretty much heavily, heavily impacted attendance pretty much across the board. We also looked at a number of articles from academic journals that discuss the link between sustained intensive professional training for educators and student gains for academic achievement. I'm now going to pass over to Chris, who will talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the CTL. Hi, so my name is Chris, and I'll be going over the SWOT analysis. In case you're unfamiliar with it, the SWOT analysis identifies the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats facing the organization. So for the CTL, we're going to start with the internal factors, which are strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so first, CTL's up-to-date website allows educators to find out more information on the CTL's uh, programs, such as the Lunch and Learns, the Mini Grants, and one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, second, the CTL uh, offers ser services of good quality, they're free, and they're easily accessible on campus. Uh, third, um, since the uh, CTL hosts frequent events, it allows them to stay relevant on campus. Uh, and last but not least, the CTL is like no other center on campus except maybe ITS. <laughs> Uh, for example, the mini grants are such a great incentive to get these educators involved with the center at, at the same time they're using uh, this money to innovate their classrooms. Uh, so now we're going to jump into some weaknesses we saw. Uh, first, we uh, 
uh, found out that there was a little media exposure of the sensor uh, in our research. We were only able to find one article that mentioned the CTL. Uh, second, we also noticed that social media platforms were not being utilized to their full potential. Uh, for example, on <coughs> Facebook, uh, there was a lot of content that was lacking in diversity. And as far as the Twitter page, there were a lot of um, professors who were active on Twitter, but the, C the, C the CTL was not following them. So there was kind of a lack of engagement there. And uh, third, um, since, C um, since Dr. I is a one-man team, it's hard to see how the CTL will continue growing over the years. So uh, we suggest that with more manpower behind Dr. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we suggest that with more manpower behind you, uh, you'd be able to focus on more pressing matters that are facing the center. And uh, last, I believe that the current venue only holds about 50 people. So if the center's end goal is to attract every educator on campus, it's going to need to start looking for a new place to hold its events. And now here's Alyssa with the external factors. Hi, I'm Alyssa. External, fac external factors of the CTL start with opportunities. Opportunities of the CTL are to research supporting the effectiveness of educator professional development and researching new faculty here at SDSU. With this research, the CTL has the opportunity to build a larger community for all educators here at SDSU and to promote community learning. Lastly, other opportunities are to implement new technologies and programs to enhance current or new or future CTL events. A threat of the CTL is a lack of interest and or time among faculty. A professor may be too busy teaching a course to attend a, to attend a CTL event or may just not be aware or interested enough in attending. Lastly, other threats include competition from similar programs here on campus at SDSU, and professors may already have pre-existing attitudes about the CTL. Next, Logan is going to lead you through planning. Hello, everyone. My name is Logan, and based on our research findings, we developed a comprehensive plan to specifically reach and engage with certain faculty members here at SDSU. Now, when uh, reporting on our target publics, it's important to know that all SDSU faculty members were targeted in this experience, even though, regardless of their experience here at the school or in their careers. And so we categorize these three, uh, we categorize these faculty members into three different groups. So professors that do not really know much about the CTL or are unaware are in the latent group, and we wanted to increase the awareness of the CTL among these group members. Secondly, professors that do know about the CTL, but don't really show any interest or desire to be involved with the Center for Teaching and Learning, um, we wanted to, they're, oh, they're part of the aware group and we wanted to change their behaviors and attitudes towards the Center for Teaching and Learning to get them to attend events and become more involved with the Center for Teaching and Learning. And thirdly, uh, those faculty members and professors that do regularly participate with the Center for Teaching and Learning, we wanted to continue to nurture the relationship between the Center for Teaching and Learning and those professors. And as the uh, head of the Goals and Objectives team, we came up with three main goals for this campaign. The first was to promote a sense of community for professors at San Diego State, and we wanted to do so by bringing to light the fact that the CTL does support the professors around the campus and also turn that around and show the CTL that there is support from faculty, from faculty members for you as well. Our next goal was to engage in conversations about teaching and learning and share ideas amongst the faculty members on this campus. And so to do that, we wanted to increase attendance at the CTL events as well as uh, promote the spread of information via email from CTL to faculty members. And our third goal was to put the CTL at the forefront of professors' mindsets, um, create that relevance with professors in the Center for Teaching and Learning, and we wanted to do so by increasing the word of mouth engagement that professors would discuss the CTL amongst their peers. Oh, now I'm going to pass it to Kelly, who is talking about the messaging. Hi there, I'm Kelly. I'm the director of messaging. Um, in order to guide all of our communication outreach efforts, <coughs> our team used all this research that we collected to develop strategic messages that would be used to communicate with the CTL's target audiences. Um, the main points that we wanted to communicate to the overall audience as a whole is that the Center for Teaching and Learning invests in faculty development, it's committed to building long-term relationships, and it mentors and shares information with all of its um, community members and colleagues. Um, in addition to just the overarching messaging that we developed, we also used the research in our depth interviews to um, pin down niche um, educator profiles, and we used our <coughs> research to then address messaging that spoke to those like specific interests and pinpoints of each educator profile. Um, Raquel is going to start uh, kick it off talking about those. Hi, I'm Raquel. Uh, myself, along with Alejandra and Asael, are going to take you through the nine educator profiles that we identified 
and the messaging strategy that we came up for, that we came with behind each one. So for the first one, uh, this one's called I Have Better Things to Do. This is a tenured faculty member at SDSU who's really busy with research and other responsibilities and may not have time to devote weekly or monthly to the CTL. Uh, we want this group to know that their expertise is exactly what the CTL needs and really encourage them to spread that knowledge to their other uh, colleagues at SDSU. The second uh, profile that we identified was maybe in the future. And this is a full-time professor at SDSU as well who doesn't have the time to take, doesn't have the time to take time out of their busy schedule to uh, devote to the CTL. Uh, if they were more interested in the events, then they might be more willing to focus their time on them. So we really want them to see what the CTL has to offer and really jump into you know, finding, more, finding out more about the program. The last profile I'm going to talk about is we just don't see eye to eye. This is a full-time professor at SDSU, possibly tenured, who kind of has their own teaching methods and techniques already and don't really feel like they could have a connection to the CTL. So we want these professors to know that, that, is, that it's really important for them to provide the best possible class experience for their students, and there's always new things to learn. So next, Alejandra is going to take you through the next three. Hello, everyone. My name is Alejandra, and I'm going to be covering the next three educator profiles. So the first one that we have is I educator, and the faculty members that fall under this category are the faculty members that tend to teach online or hybrid classes. Now the issue that these faculty members tend to face is that they feel that they are not really meeting the needs of their students because of the lack of face-to-face -face interaction. So what we would like to convey as a CTL to, to the faculty members that fall under this category is that if they were to attend more of the Lunch and Learn events, maybe the CTL would be able to provide more useful ways in order for them to communicate more effectively with their students. The second one that we have is playing the field. The faculty members that fall under the uh, playing the field category are the professors that are more likely to attend the CTL events but don't have the time. Also, these professors tend to be have less than five years, le less than five years of teaching experience, and would really take advantage of the resources that the CTL has to offer. What the CTL would like to convey to them is that if they were to attend the events, they would be able to better their uh, teaching for the years to come that uh, they have for learning to their students. And the last one that we have is been there, done that, and the faculty members that fall under this category are the professors that have basically been around the block, and they've been teaching for more than 10 years, and they are tenured faculty. So the CTO would like to tell them that although that they feel that they may not uh, be able to learn anything new, if they actually gave the CTL the chance, they might actually be able to learn something new to implement into their classrooms and teach to their students in future classrooms. And now we'll pass it on to Asael, who will talk about the last three educator profiles. Hello, my name is Asael, like she mentioned. And so my three profiles are young, energetic, and naive. So the educators that fall into this category tend to be educators who are new to SDSU. So they might not necessarily know about the CTL, so because of that, uh, they, the people in this category tend to be really open and willing to share their ideas about teaching methods and things like that. Unfortunately, since they might not be aware of the CTL, our message to them is we're the perfect place for you since we're the place where you can talk to other educators, get some feedback from teaching methods and things like that. Uh, second is the students don't care, so why should I? Educators that fall into this category tend to lack motivation. They think that students don't really put in an effort to learn, so the educators in this category don't think they should put in an effort to, to, to better their teaching, uh, since they don't, really see, uh, they don't really see it going anywhere. Uh, so we want to let these educators in this category know that being an educator on this campus is one of the most important things and that it's very valued. Lastly, we have I value being part of the CTL community and educators in this community are already at CTL events and they're already aware of the CTL. So what we want to do as the CTL is expand this community and see it grow. So next we have Katie. Hi, my name is Natalie and I'm the Director of Implementation. I'm going to be talking a little bit along with my, some of the people who are on the implementation team about some of the strategies and tactics that we use throughout Educator with Impact Week to share CTL messaging through the SDSU community to faculty and staff. So from March 21st to March 24th, we used so much of the research um, and insights that we got from the research team, as well as using the goals and objectives and the messaging that were developed by those teams to really not, um, bog down some really great ideas to help us interact with faculty on campus. And first, Rochelle's going to talk about our gift card initiative. 
Hello, my name is Rochelle, and as a part of our pre-campaign survey, respondents were given a chance to win a $5 Starbucks gift card. As you can see here, we had a graphic designer create this design to keep in line with our messaging and cater to our target audience. And on March 13, we chose five random winners, and on March 23rd, we personally handed these gift cards to them. And Natalie will continue talking more about the tactics. So our first grassroots campaign that we really did, something that Lauren mentioned when she was introdu introducing our group, is that we really wanted to take the time to interact with faculty members face to face. And the first thing we did that was a smart cookie. What we wanted to do was um, invite professors to educator with impact week in a way that was informative, but that also had value to them. So we wanted to avoid something that was too kitschy and didn't get them the information across, as well as not providing them information in a way that wasn't exciting. We knew that flyers always find their way into recycling bins. And we did that with our Smart Cookie Initiative. We branded 375 individual uh, Famous Amos cookie bags and handed them out to professors across all seven colleges, departments, and schools. We were able to reach 375 professors, and as you can see from their smiling faces, <laughs> they were really excited to be greeted with cookies from students. One of the really cool things about the Smart Cookie Initiative is it allowed us to reach all nine professor profiles, um, and we were able to reach the young, naive, or young, energetic, and naive professor who was really excited that a student was visiting them, and then probably a little dis disappointed to find out they weren't there for office hours, as well as that been there, or excuse me, been there, done that professor, or the, the students don't care professor who, the students don't care why should I, was surprised to see a student in their office in the first place. Next, we had students give back. We received donations from Hubert's Lemonade and Kind Bars to receive more than 200 lemonade bottles as well as 200 Kind Healthy Snacks. And we stood outside of the faculty staff club during the lunch rush hour uh, during a California Faculty Association meeting. And we handed out Kind Bars, lemonades, as well as branded CTL invitations that spoke about messaging as well as programming and social for the CTL. And we were able to reach 162 professors. As you can see from this professor here, as well as Annalise's smiling face, they were really excited once again to be greeted by students in a way that showed that we really did care and we were really excited to have them there. We hope that in doing so, we were able to give them the message that we are value our education and maybe send the message that by attending CTL events, they're improving the education that we're already so fortunate to receive. Next, I'm going to pass it back to Rochelle, who's going to be talking about our video. So our next tactic was a video called There's No SDSU Without You. This is a short video where we ask students to tell us about a professor who has influenced their academic career here at State and write their name on a dry erase board. Um, with this video, we wanted to show how SDSU educators make a positive impact on their students, whether it's through their teaching or the, or the relationships they built with them over time. Um, this video was attached to a CTL newsletter and emailed to all SDSU faculty, and it was also posted on the CTL social media channels. And it has received more than 225 views and extremely positive feedback. And I will pass it back, or I will pass it to Maya to continue with our last tactic. I have Maya again. And our next tactic took place on March 24 called Pinning Down What Makes Education Great. For this tactic, the CTL team stood outside the faculty staff club with the cork board. And we asked professors to sign to write down. Um, Answer the prompt, I teach because, on custom CTL theme note cards. We did this because we wanted professors to pin down why, to pin down and kind of reminisce and reflect on why they choose to teach, why they love teaching, and why they do this every single day. In addition to that, by pinning it on the board, it was a chance for professors who see it to motivate them and remind them why they're here as well. Through this tactic, we reached a total of 68 educators. And next, I'm going to pass it to Katie, who will talk about publicity. Hi everyone, I'm Katie, Director of Publicity on this campaign. So to begin with, we had two main goals throughout the semester, and that was first to increase overall, overall awareness of the CTL's existence, and then to in increase interaction and traffic on the social media sites. So we began by first crafting a media release based on Anthony Luque's innovative teaching methods made possible by a mini-grant awarded by the CTL. So we pitched the story to the various media outlets seen here, and we have confirmation that the story will be running in the Aztec tomorrow, reaching a print readership of 5,000 and 30 more thousand presences online. So when it came to social media, our team first began by creating a Twitter follow list of over 90 relevant users to increase the CTL's Twitter network overall. Next, we created a specialized social media content calendar that ran from March 22nd to April 7th of pre-designed Twitter and Facebook posts for the CTL's use. Third, we, our team created original and unique professor memes that we figured would be funny and relatable to give a little bit of a humorous edge to the CTL and definitely liven up the social media presence, bring it a little bit into this age. 
And finally, we took $25 of our pre-allotted budget to advertise on Facebook, which resulted in 14 more page likes on the CTL's Facebook page. Next, Alyssa is going to talk about a unique way that we honor professors' innovative teaching methods here on campus. Hi, I'm Alyssa again. Another publicity strategy of ours was educator spotlights. We interviewed four professors here at SDSU who the CTL wished to recognize for their innovative teaching methods. Educators spotlighted include Charles Goring, Melissa Soto, Tom Packard, and Dr. Kay Sweetser. These interviews were transformed, transformed into blogs written by the CTL PR team and are to be shared on the CTL's website. Not only did the CTL have the opportunity to honor these professors, but it is also a way for others to learn how their fellow colleagues are learning from the CTL and how they can learn more and implement new strategies in their own classrooms here at SDSU. Next, Asael is going to share graphics. Asael again. So I was the director of graphics for the campaign, and so some graphics we wanted to do for the campaign, we wanted to be very fresh and unique with some memes that we had, and then uh, we also wanted to embody SDSU's culture by using its red and black color scheme throughout. Uh, as they mentioned before, we made flyers for the smart cookie tactic, which was handed out to educators, and there they were able to see uh, the events coming up for the, for the, impact, the impact Educators Week. Um, so next is Annalise with evaluation. For evaluation, this provided us with our post-test research data, and we conducted evaluation from March 25th to April 4th. The reason we conducted it during this time frame is because it immediately followed our implementation and Educators with Impact Week, and would therefore give us the most recent and relevant information. I will now pass it off. Summer, who will continue to explain evaluation. Hi, Summer. I'll talk about survey. Combi uh, comparing the pre and post test survey result, we have an increase of the support for the CTL by 6.86%, combining the score of attitude, word of mouth, and relationship scale. So for attitude, we have a we have a 7.12% increase in faculty support. Sorry. Uh, for attitude, we have a 3.28% increase in faculty's positive attitude towards the CTL, meaning they are more likely to support the CTL's program and services. And for word of mouth, word of mouth we have a 7.12% increase, meaning they are more likely to recommend the CTL to their colleagues. And for relationship, we have a 7.76% increase, meaning they are more, they have a higher, more positive impression on how CTL communicate with them. And lastly, it's a, it is a most encouraging result. We have a 10% increase in the faculty's satisfaction on how the CTO handle questions and queries. Now I'll pass to Kelsey to talk about our successes. Hello, my name is Kelsey, and I serve as the semester's executive assistant for the CTL PR team. And I'm going to be discussing some of the other areas in which we saw success throughout the duration of this campaign, as well as highlighting the recommendations that we developed following our post-campaign evaluation. So first, the areas in which we saw other successes can be summarized into engagement, interaction, and interest. First, during the campaign, there were a total of seven emails sent out by the CTL, and these emails saw an average open rate of 402 faculty, showing that the faculty are engaging with the emails as a result of the increased awareness generated through the campaign. Next, we saw uh, we interacted with uh, more than 600 faculty members through our in-person events. This included the smart cookie tactic, uh, students give back as well as pinning down what makes education great. So through these face-to-face -face interactions, we were able to have really encouraging and positive conversations with the educators and highlight to them the needs and importance of the CTL for them. And lastly, we provided new content for the CTL to share across their social media, email, and website, which further encourages professors to engage and interact with the center. Next, I'll be discussing our recommendations. So we divided our recommendations into two areas. First, social media, and secondly, um, events. In the area of social media, we recommend that the CTL um, implement either a teaching tip of the day or tip of the week, which encourages professors to keep up with the CTL and social media by giving them a regular occurrence to look forward to, showing them new pedagogical trip tips and things that they can learn from. Next, we recommend that the CTL continue to tease events ahead of time we found that by promoting our event um, through the flyers, passed out, as well as on social media, <coughs> it really increased the attendance at the events that got professors very excited to attend. Next, we recommend that the CTL continue to employ paid Facebook advertisements because through this method, 
You're able to target very specific demographics and ultimately <coughs> increase engagement and awareness with your page. And lastly, our social media recommendation is to continue to share relevant articles. Our survey and our in-person conversations showed to us that the professors really do um, enjoy and like seeing these articles um, shared by relevant journals and authors in their fields. Next, in terms of events, we recommend that the CTL ask for post-event feedback to see where professors and educators would like to see improvements and changes in events, so that way the future events can be tailored to their best needs and interests. Next, we recommend that they continue to share and create video content. Uh, we received really great feedback from the video that was sent out via email, and we encourage the CTL to continue to employ tactics such as this. And lastly, we recommend that the CTL continue to connect with major brands for promotions. Our partnerships with Kind Bars and Hebrews Lemonades drew out really great crowds to the event, and professors and educators are very excited to see these brands on campus, and the brands are more than willing to connect with the CTL and engage to help spread the message and awareness for the CTL. And next, I'll pass it on to Lauren to wrap up the presentation. Well, thank you for being here today. Um, let's get a round of applause for our client. For <laughs> of the CTL and we're happy to answer any questions you may have about our campaign. <coughs>